This episode is sponsored by Fimora. I always knew Thai horror is underrated, but I never really gave it a chance. With its rich history and vibrant culture rooted in Buddhism, Thai horror film has to be special. Yet I know literally nothing about the genre. So last week, I finally set everything aside, picked a few movies, set my ass down, and watched some. And boy, oh boy, do I have some recommendations for you! Today, I have three Thai horror films to share, each geared towards different types of audience. I will explain why they are so good, why they are different from other horror fairs, and offer some of my analysis so you can jump into the films and experience them to their fullest. Come join me as I explore. For the first time, the underrated world of Thai horror. Let's start with the obvious choice, 2004's Shutter. It came out during the J horror boom of the 2000s and is one of the few non-Japanese horrors that received the Hollywood treatment. It certainly has that J horror atmosphere. The film centers around a couple. Just your average girl with her photographer boyfriend having fun, getting drunk, who ends up committing a hit and run. After they leave the scene, unnerving events begin to occur around them. The scares are standard for its time: ghostly photographs, which we saw in Ringu. Haunted public washrooms, which we saw in Ju On, but they are effective and cohesive, making the film more than the sum of its parts. The interesting part, though, is where it differs from J horror. For J horror, it is pretty clear from the beginning that there is a curse. The danger is external and real. In Shutter, for a big chunk of the film, you don't even know if there really is a ghost. Every time there's a scare, boom, the character wakes up. Ghostly photos. Faces on photos. Halfway through the film, you don't even know if there was a car accident to begin with. It makes you feel like both the characters and you are going insane. It focuses less on the source of the horror and focuses much more so on the protagonist's guilt-ridden mind. It's almost like everything is in his head. With the settings of the blood red photo lab where all the messed up things happen, and the photo studio that suddenly goes dark where the protagonist cries out into the void with no response. Turns out this is a movie with heavy Buddhist influence. In Buddhism, there are two different sides of hell. There is the hot narakas where the body is tortured through physical pain, and the cold narakas where the soul is tormented through darkness and cold. Watching this movie through the lens of Buddhist philosophy makes it even better. It's about karma, about a man's guilt coming back to torment him and dragging him to hell and back. It's about desire, how it leads to unsatisfaction, and how it is the cause of all suffering. I can go into more specifics without spoiling the plot, but keep those concepts in mind while watching the film, and I think you'll find yourself fascinated by it just the way I was. If not, Shutter is still great even for casual viewing. It is definitely one of the best horror films from that era. If you like J horror, you will love Shutter. Speaking of being a photographer, do you know I used to shoot wedding videos for a living? Well, the most annoying thing I had to do is to find an appropriate title card to match the wedding. But with today's sponsor, Filmora, it couldn't get any easier. Filmora is an easy-to-use, fully decked-out editing tool. Simply import your clips, make your edit, and choose a title. Look at all these, all professional-looking, quick, and easy to edit. And if there's still not enough. You can download even more from Filmstocks.com. Ooh, a manga title pack with supports like this, plus an intuitive interface. Filmora is able to produce professional quality content, even if you are a beginner editor. If you want to see if Filmora is for you, good news! You can download Filmora and try it out for free right now. Link in the description below. 
Whether you are a beginner looking to get started or a wedding videographer trying to find a good tool, Filmora is a good choice. One thing I learned about horror is that it doesn't have to be scary to be good. P. Mark is one of those. It is a 2013 spooky comedy about a group of soldiers who return from war. They stay in Mark's house, where Mark's wife also resides. Unbeknown to everyone but known to you, Mark's wife is a ghost. The plot centers around the friends trying to get to the truth. Get Mark away from his wife, all without tipping off the ghost, who is all too willing to murder them in cold blood. It's surprisingly touching and quite funny at times. Mark. Reminiscent of the Stephen Chow style comedy. It also looks really good for a movie with only a $1.8 million budget. But the most impressive thing is how suspenseful it is. It is the Hitchcock way of building tension. You know, two men talking, not knowing there's a bomb underneath their table. Well, the ghost wife is the bomb. At first, you don't know who she is and if she really is dead. And then the friends discover she's dead, but don't know if she's dangerous. After their first failed attempt at cluing Mark in, a villager let them know the wife has killed someone before, which explains why the villagers are so scared of her. The film ramps up the tension with expert writing. They are in danger, but they can't leave their friends behind. It is a two hour long dancing with the devil. It is so suspenseful, I love it. And that, yes, all of that, happens in the first quarter of the movie. While all this is happening, the film never stops being funny. It has been a long time since I last saw a film that's visual comedy like this. The ghost wife, literally in the shadows, staring at them, making sure they are having fun. It's uncomfortable but hilarious at the same time. If you pay attention, she's almost always in the background staring, fading into the shadows, just enough to make you uncomfortable but not enough to stand out. It's a great visual motif for horror and also a funny visual gag. How this film manages to balance horror and comedy is beyond me. The way it is simultaneously a horror and a comedy in the same shot is mind-boggling. Even the romantic moments feel real, genuine and sincere. The film went on to become the highest grossing Thai film ever, probably because it has a little bit of something for everyone. It's one heck of a fun ride for casual viewing, and an excellent film to study writing tone and atmosphere. If you are into Stephen Chow horror, or you want a spooky fun time this Halloween, P Mark is the film for you. Finally, let's talk about a more recent Thai horror film, 2017's The Promise. The film opens with two young girls leaving the handprints on the highest floor of a skyscraper under construction. They promise to leap together once the building is finished. Gotta love a good long take. Oh, it's still going. It was 1997. Thailand was at the beginning of its economic upturn. Large real estate projects were being built, middle class populations were growing. Things were looking good. But then the 1997 Asian financial crisis hit, tearing apart their families. As their parents suffer, they too suffer. Conflicts emerge, escalating into domestic violence. We see these two girls trying their best to support each other. But as both of them sink deeper into depression, they began contemplating suicide, which leads to a very tragic end. And you may be wondering, how is that supposed to be a horror film? Well, you see, that's not the entire story. That's just the first 20 minutes. The film's actual plot is about the girl who ran away from the suicide. 20 years later, she's now a successful businesswoman and a loving mother. On her daughter's 16th birthday, she suddenly finds herself haunted by the ghost of her dead friend. It took me this long to tell you the actual plot because the film takes 20 minutes to enter the main story. For the first 20 minutes, 
it is unconcerned with horror or suspense. Much like its long take, the film itself takes time with its characters, not just showing you who they are, but letting you live through their lives, feel their emotions and the relationships. The filmmakers understood the value of good character writing, and trust that their characters would be enough to keep your attention. And they were right. I was actually invested in seeing how the story would play out. And once the actual plot starts, I was there for the protagonist. For example, when she sees the handprint on the wall, the same handprint from the opening drawn by her daughter while sleepwalking, my first reaction was, how shocking it must be for her. Yes, this movie has some amazingly suspenseful scares. It's entertaining on its own, enough to excite audiences in a regular horror flick. But in this one, I feel like I understand every move she makes, every feeling she experiences, the shock she feels. I wasn't in the mood to be excited. I felt a sense of dread. No doubt, the same dread felt by our protagonist. The rest of the film is filled with scares like this. While not subtle, the film is not violent either, just very emotionally impactful. With the excellent acting from the actress that transcends the language barrier, this really is one of the most emotionally charged horror films I've ever seen, eclipsing Babadook and even Dark Water. This is just one heck of a well-done film that, I believe, anyone with an interest in film should watch. It's great casually too, but put down your phone, sit tight, and really look at this film with no distractions. It is worth every bit of your attention. It's that good. I know I haven't even scratched the surface of Thai horror, but just these few films are enough to make me excited to see more. Not only are these films good and entertaining, it feels like I'm learning a lot about Thai culture as well. From the importance of Buddhist philosophy in Thai culture to the impact of the 97 financial crisis. I even noticed a cultural shift, where themes in movies shifted from religious punishment to money and human relationships. Even the signature Thai greeting is showing up less and less. So if you are from Thailand, let me know. Was my instinct correct? That people are getting more and more secular, with Buddhist tradition fading into the background? Isn't it fun that you can learn about Thailand like this, just by watching movies? It's like traveling, and in 2020, it's probably one of the best ways to travel. So why not book your trip right now? Set a day you like to relax and be entertained, buckle up and enjoy the journey. And when you are finished, come back and leave a comment below. Let me know what happened on your journey into the underrated world of Thai horror.